20-year-old student midwife, Joy Morgan, has been missing for two months. She was last seen at an event at her church. Her family are desperate for information. 30 miles away in Hertfordshire, a man is being questioned by the police. that website in videos, in pictures, in everything. Very As we speak to Joy's sister and brother, another family member interrupts with a big update. In the church. How could you miss that person? How? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they charged him. With what? Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. Life is a cruel thing. Brothers and sisters of the Israelite church, you say you're her family, you say that she's your sister. I ask again, where is, where is it? your sister? Bring her home. That's all. That's all. <laughs> Just bring her home. I know. It's six o'clock. I'm Jane Killick. Police investigating the disappearance of Joy Morgan, the trainee midwife from the University of Hertfordshire, have rearrested a man on suspicion of murder. A man's been charged with the murder of missing student Joy Morgan. The 21-year-old was last seen at a church in Ilford in London on Boxing Day. What will come out over the next few months is the story of a young woman who became distant from her family, deeply committed to a church described by some as a hate group, a church where she'll meet her murderer. I know that IUIC has the words of eternal life. Um, I'm... I know it for a fact, and that's why I will continue to endure Lord's will and be of IUIC until the end. Lord's will. She's a good person. She's kind. She's thoughtful. She always want to help, and she is her name. She's just Joy. Oh, Joy was lovely as a kid. She was so funny <laughs> and energetic and always smiling and running around and... Just, she was lovely, really nice. Joy grew up in Battersea, South London, with her mum, two sisters and a brother. Our treat was we go swimming and we walk from Latchmere swimming bars down to Balcon Road and it'd be like a chicken shop on the corner, which used to do like two pound meals. So our thing was to go swimming, oh, oh enjoy it. We'd get like a chicken box for our little treat. Little things like that. Sometimes I had no money, but I used to walk up and down to all the different parks and we used to just play in them. She was my first sister, so it was exciting to me. And she just brought so much joy to me. I used to be really, I, was, I still am really proud of her. She liked to make sure that you were doing the best for yourself. Stuff like looking for jobs, going to college. She always wanted to make sure that you were doing the most you could do at, you know, with, what, with, with the surroundings that you have. She wanted to go on to be a doctor, and she was going to. She, she said, "I'm going to train midwifery first, and then when I pass that, I'm going on to be a doctor afterwards, Mum." I just missed that kind-hearted person. Her smile and her laugh. A beautiful person. Her uncle Prince, stepdad Sean, and dad Paul all died between 2006 and 2014. With Prince passing first was like hard for everybody, but yeah, it would have been hard for Joy. She was really sad about that. Her stepdad, that was terrible because that was cancer, like what happened to Prince. Um, and then obviously what happened with her dad was really, really bad and she was sad. She was low. In 2014, Joy's dad took his own life. She had um, a lot of tragic losses back to back, so... She was very vulnerable and like 
she wanted she wanted to feel a part of something. Before coming into the truth, I was kind of into the Illuminati thing, so I was like watching videos, like researching it, and then one of the suggested videos was um, from IUIC, from IUIC Atlanta camp, and from then I was mind blown, and from there it just continued. It was not long after a dad's death that Joy started becoming interested in a church called Israel United in Christ. We haven't come to play no games. Who's the king? Christ! Who's the king? Christ! The church was founded in the US in 2003. Its leader is a man called Bishop Nathaniel. IUIC is part of the Black Hebrew Israelite movement. It believes that Black, Hispanic and Native American people are God's chosen ones and are the true descendants of the Biblical 12 tribes of Israel. In the beginning, it was a proud feeling. It was a feeling of being a part of a unity, a unified group. You don't really see a lot of Black people together, honestly, so I had a, a sense of pride, a sense of, yes, like we're actually organizing something, we're doing something for God. And so I, I was very prideful in the beginning. I was happy, I was excited. I watched men who came in that were drug addicts, drug dealers, you know, um, and they actually changed. Seeing how, how the Bible could unify our people to where the barriers of, you know, blacks and Hispanics fighting each other, you know, just us as, a, as a, being at the bottom of society, you know, uh, 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 hating one another, we were now treating one another like family. But IUIC has some controversial views. This group's philosophy is if you're not part of certain races, you will eventually be their slave. But leaders say they are not a hate group because they claim they don't hurt anyone. The other nations are going to be our slaves in the kingdom. So I will be your slave? Yes, according to the Bible. All the other nations that uh, came up against us, they put us, sold us into slavery that are oppressing us, they're going to be slaves in the kingdom. And we're going to be the ruling people in the kingdom under Christ. These views have resulted in it being labelled as a black nationalist hate group by a civil rights organisation in the US. They have the belief that Caucasians are literally, not figuratively, not like metaphorically, but they are literally the devil. So what white people have done, like with slavery, for example, and other ways of oppressing uh, black people, are because they're the devil, right? It's because white people have this, uh, you know, horrific, it's like we're, white people are genetically driven to destroy black people. Uh, in comparison to the Israelite community itself, yes, they're a hate group. Because the, the Israelite, to be an Israelite and to be part of a, a community of, of believing Israelites, you, you, don't, you don't learn to hate people. You, you, you're supposed to have a, a, a higher understanding than to just hate people. IUIC dismisses Bezalel Ben Israel as a disgruntled ex-member. It says it doesn't recognize the Southern Poverty Law Center as a reputable organization. It denies it's a hate group and says it doesn't encourage anyone to break laws. In 2017, IUIC opened its first premises in the UK. It's based in Ilford in East London. The men regularly street preach and the members meet on Saturdays for what's known as the Sabbath. The church leaders in the US post sermons online so that followers around the world can watch. Their kingdom is gonna be rolled together in a mushroom cloud, the dropping the bomb. It was all on the internet that she was um, getting it. She became someone different. She became to separate herself from her family, which was important to her because I know Joy loves her family. The teachings of the church, which I'm not too clear on, I'm not gonna go into all of them like I know it all, but just it just seems like a cult and she just got swept away in it. I've been in bed at two o'clock at night. She'd actually wait up to hear the man's talking in America. Now when you're listening to someone speak, but it just sounds so harsh. Exactly. These people are stupid. These are, <laughs> these are strategies and tactics to keep us from the mission. So I was going, no, 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 I'm not having that. So in the end, it all started taking out the broadband so she couldn't do it at night time. She was getting more and more into it. And when she was getting more and more into it, she became more vocal with some things that wasn't nice. Yeah. What kind of things? A white devil. 
her, our whole family's mixed. You know, her sisters are mixed, her, you know, her stepdad is white, I'm white, she's got other members of the family that are white, and she's an open-minded person. Well, because like, in the Israelite church, you can't be Israelite if, you're, if your father's a white man, so she would like be like to my little sister, you're a white devil, and it was like, whoa, what's happened to Joy? And then that's when she became more distant, like, it's like she hardly spoke to me and stuff. I mean, some people might hear it and go, it sounds like Joy was a bit racist. Oh, I blatantly called my daughter racist. I ain't saying that, I never called her that. Oh, yeah, I did. I said the religion that she's got is racism. Joy was 17 when she joined that church. And everyone knows when you're 17, you're basically still a kid. You still can be influenced by all kinds of things. I said, enough, enough. Enough now, you need to stop that rubbish. No, 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 you need to stop that rubbish. And then afterwards, it, it ended up she left. Joe was rehoused by the council until she started university in Hertfordshire in autumn 2017. Studying to be a midwife, in her first year, Joy lived on campus. The uni says she was quiet, highly respected, with a caring nature and perpetual smile but her involvement with IUIC continued. And I even went to her friends and, and even a teacher, a, a teacher at school, even to my doctor and spoke to them about this cult business that she was in and, you know, what do I do? And, you know, it was all saying to us, so I was like, all of us really, collectively, oh, she'll get over it, you know, she'll come, she's going to university, you know, thinking this will be a change. She was growing, she was becoming a woman. And I think if, you, if she would have been given a few more years, she would have been out of that church. She would have realised it's not for her. She's too good. She's too helpful and kind. But two former members of IUIC London who knew Joy say her dedication to the church was clear. We've agreed not to show their faces. Joy was sweet. Um, she was naive, bubbly, just a typical teenager, really. She was very loyal to IUIC extremely loyal. She wouldn't be the sort of person that you could raise any concerns or worries about the congregation to her. She was faithful, like blindly faithful. It divided her from us because it made her seem like they were there for her when we couldn't be there for her, where I couldn't be there for her because I put her out at 18 because I said, enough. I'm not having every day. Every single day is about the same thing. It's about hate. You are not allowed to make friends outside of this. You're not supposed to hang out with people outside of the group. You're supposed to marry in the group. In other words, you are to transfer your allegiance to from whatever you had before, whether it's family or friends, to this organization and this organization only. And this is one of the things that makes Israel United in Christ be, you know, seem to be very cult-like. I'm not surprised at all to hear that she was estranged from her family and that, and that this was very problematic. Because when you sign on with these people, you are in that group and you are no longer a part of whatever network, social network you had before. It's absolutely, absolutely not true, it's a lie. Um, right now, as I'm speaking, my beloved mother is here. She, she came down from New York. Um, this is one of the church leaders talking to us in August. Um, I would have her come into the screen, but I don't want to, you know, put her face out there like that. Um, but she is here. I never cut ties with her at all, although we have different beliefs. Now, what we do teach is don't follow the ways of your family members who might be walking contrary to what God says. Your family's in the world. They're, they're of the devil because they don't know who they are. They're lost. This is what they teach us. So basically cut them off or you're not going to heaven. IUIC is my family and like the best family that I've ever had. That's it really. In the days before Joe went missing, she'd been invited to a family party. Her auntie was doing a little, little Christmas thing after Christmas and she was inviting the family down. So I was trying to talk her in to come in, just for a little, because she, like, she doesn't believe in Christmas. I was saying to her, like, it's not Christmas, it's a family thing. Why don't you have a drink? You know, it's just because it's 
December, that's just, that's a Christian thing. You're not that way. So, you know, she didn't want to go. She didn't go. Instead, on the 26th of December, 2018, she went to an event at IUIC Ilford. It was the last place she was seen alive. But it would take six weeks before her family realised she was missing. It was Christmas time. Joy don't celebrate Christmas, so there was no worry. Then afterwards, I was still calling, and I'm a worrier anyway, so I was just like, hmm. She did say her phone wasn't working properly. She'd get back to me, you know? So I know she's always busy with her placement, or she's busy with uni, so Joy would get back to me at some point. I did not believe there was anything wrong. I thought there was something wrong with my phone, then there was something wrong with Joy's phone, and I didn't get her. Then there was other things happening, it was happening, and I was phoning her, phoning her. All of a sudden, February 6th, I was going, hold on a second, dear. It's six weeks. I will never not feel any guilt until the day they bury me. The alarm was finally raised on the 7th of February after Joy's letting agent contacted Carol to say Joy hadn't paid her rent and her flatmates hadn't seen her for a while. Joy's mum reported her missing to the police. It didn't take them long to identify a suspect. Uh, you've been arrested on suspicion of the murder of Joy Morgan. Uh, I'll have to caution you, as I did do at the roadside, you do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. Listen, if you do not mention when questioned, something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. I just want to know if she's dead. Okay. She dead. I just want to know if she's dead. Because we're, like, this, this, is, this is shocking. It's like, it's like I don't think she's like, just like I'm dreaming of what we call she dead. Shofa El Israel, a member of Joy's church, was arrested two days later. Joy was reported missing on the 7th, and on the 9th, Mr. Israel was arrested for the first time. So it was really quick that it was, you know, just deemed that this was totally out of character for Joy and that with absolutely no contact um, from her since the 26th of December that there was something more sinister. As the police continued gathering evidence, the family were frustrated by what they saw as a lack of media interest. The recent disappearance of Hull student Libby Squire had made major headlines. Libby Squire was last seen on Thursday, just before midnight. We saw other people's cases all over the media, but not Joy. And yes, it is because Joy is black. And yes, it is because there's no scandal behind Joy. I can't comment on why the media pick up or don't pick up on certain uh, cases. I think we put everything out there. I think um, certainly the case from up in uh, Humberside was ahead of us by a week and so had already got that impetus going. Um, whether that was to do with, with race and the fact that Joy was, was black, I don't know. She couldn't sell news because if she could have sold the news with all that stuff behind her, you know, gang warfare, you know, guns, drugs and all the rest of it, they would have stuck her little black beauty on the telly. On the 27th of February, Shofa El Israel was charged with the murder of Joy Morgan. Her body still hadn't been found. Born in Nigeria, Shofa El Israel came to Britain in 1997. His original name was Ajibola Shogbamimu, but often when people join IUIC, they adopt a new name. He got his name from his voice. Um, obviously, the shofar is the ram's horn. Um, and because he had a very loud voice, um, he was a prominent speaker. Um, one of the things that IUIC do a lot of is street preaching, and they also do a lot of videos where they're teaching. And a brother who has a very strong, distinctive, loud voice um, is something to be celebrated. It's now five months since Joy was last seen. And despite Shofel Israel being charged with her murder almost two months earlier, police are still searching for any trace of Joy. Because it took six weeks for her to be reported missing, it meant possible CCTV evidence had been deleted. Every day it's, you know, have we found something? Have we, have we got anything positive? And every day you're asking and every day those search teams go, go out. And every day it's a, okay, we'll try again tomorrow. Um, of course, that gets exhausted after a while in that you run out of the areas that your information tells you to look and then you're in needle in a haystack territory.
Newsbeat. In other news, a man's pleaded not guilty to murdering a student from Hertfordshire. Joy Morgan hasn't been seen since Boxing Day last year. 40-year-old Shafar El Israel will go on trial next month. Detectives have charged him, although a body hasn't been found. It's the eve of the trial. I open my balcony and I, st and I stand on it. And when I look on my balcony, I have to say, like, you know, where are you, Joy? Because I don't know where she is. It's the only one person that knows anything. My mum, I was lucky, you know, I come from a West Indian family. My mum used to tell me a thing that, you know, you can, um, you can only cross one bridge at a time. So when I get there, I get to that bridge, then I'll cross it. You have no other choice but to get up and go on with it. Can't lay in your bed. The bed don't swallow you up. You know, you can't starve yourself to death because I've been trying it and it ain't working. You know, I have no other choice but to get up and wash, dress, you know, wash up, dress up, step up, because that's all I can do. I'm hoping to find out what really happened, because up until now it's all confusing. They haven't even told us. All they're saying is that Joy was missing from this day and this, all of this is a big gap. What happened? How did it come to this? How did she get involved with this man? I want to know it all. I feel like my, my sister got robbed of her future. It's the first week of the trial and Joy's family, the suspect's family and members of IUIC have all come to court. Israel and his wife were also members of IUIC and were friends with Joy. They have a family home in Luton and a flat in Cricklewood in North London, two locations that would become key to events. The couple would pick Joy up and take her between her home in Hatfield in Hertfordshire and the church in Ilford. The court hears the defendant initially told police he dropped Joy off at home after the church event on the 26th of December. 26th was a Wednesday. I dropped her off on the 26th because my wife was pregnant. And at first, yes, on that day when I dropped her off, she was supposed to be spending the night with my wife because she normally stays with that with her sometimes. But this was a lie. He later claimed Joy didn't want to stay at her home and asked to go back to his flat in North London where she stayed on the sofa before he then took her back to Hatfield two days later. She was crying and she said she wanted that she was going to, to leave. She to said, leave the church? Yes, she said that it would be okay for her to come to Cripwood. And I told her, I explained to her, look, we're um, we not supposed to be staying together. So we went to Cripwood and she stayed in the living room. She stayed on the couch in the living room. Then um, the next day I took her back to um, Hatfield when she had come down. Coming out in the court case, that Shofarol picked up Joy and dropped her back. With it just being those two in the car, that just rings alarm bells because that was never supposed to happen. Yeah. RUIC was so stringent about the relationship between men and women. And I know that there was a time that Shofarol was told explicitly not to have Joy in his car unless his wife was present, and that was done in front of the school. That was done in front of the congregation on, on the Sabbath. So it's beyond me how and why she continued getting lifts from him or he continued giving her lifts. That shouldn't have happened. The jury then hears that Joy's house keys were found in his car when police searched it after his arrest. She obviously doesn't have access to her flat because you have her keys in your car. The keys being found, when he said it, that she was alive, you know, he left her alive. Well, she couldn't have been alive if she had no key to get to her flat. You know, you know she never phoned me, so she never got her, her key, she never phoned him. So that, that means she's not around, she's not around. But what were they doing in his flat? He claims they watched several videos, including one from former IUIC church member Bezalel, about why he'd left the organisation all part of Shofar El Israel's story that Joy was considering leaving. And not just the, the sins I was committing uh, at the time, but was also putting the organization above the law. The court heard Joy's phone number was removed from a church instant messaging group on Telegram on the 28th of December. It's one of the ways someone shows they have decided to leave the organization. 
Some church members who gave evidence said that was a surprise because Joy didn't seem unhappy. Many of them tried to contact her on the phone. But the prosecution say it was Shofar El Israel who'd removed her from the group after he'd killed her. He did this to cover his tracks. Then, as he drove around Stevenage, probably looking for a place to get rid of Joy's body, he would leave mobile phone evidence that would be crucial in a case with no body or forensic evidence. On the 28th of December, his car was picked up on police license plate cameras near Stevenage, and around the same time, Joy's phone sent a signal from the same area. Shofar El Israel had lost status in the church, being demoted in rank a few months before Joy's disappearance. IUIC says it's after he'd interrupted a leader who was speaking and then got angry after being corrected. I think he was rude to Officer Ashanel and um, he was demoted as a result of that because I think he swore at him and had some sort of like blow up. Israel United in Christ operates with a strict hierarchy system. Men have ranks such as bishop, deacon and the military sounding captain, officer or soldier. Women don't have formal ranks and are simply called sisters. They're not allowed to wear trousers and have to refer to the men as sir, brother or by their rank. Some former members say this hierarchy system has caused problems within the church and means some people are scared to speak out. People were able to do bad things to other people and <laughs> nobody would say nothing because, oh, this person's an officer or this person's a captain or well, this person's a this, and they were literally scared that they would lose their their ticket to the kingdom, I guess, like, you know, heaven or whatever you want to call it, uh, if they spoke up against this person. So I'm trying to think for Sister Joy, even if this brother was um, Shofael, even if he was going to pick her up, he had rank. How did she feel? If, the, if this man was dropping in front of her house saying, oh, I'm here, I'm going to bring you to the school now, she would just say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. IUIC members follow strict rules which it claims are set out in the Bible. There's no sex before marriage and women and men aren't allowed to be alone together if they're not husband and wife. Single men and women who want to date each other need approval from church leaders and will have to be chaperoned if they want to go on a date. If leaders don't like the way members are behaving, they can be stood up and told off in front of the congregation or even kicked out. IUIC, um have a habit of public humiliation. They stood me up one too many times and I found myself really just crying and being very vulnerable. And it's all men doing this. So they're grown men, they're, you know, and just very aggressive and very harsh. And I got tired of it. They did it one too many times and I'm like, you know what? I'm not crying this time. Worried about accusations of inappropriate behavior with Joy, Israel told detectives that's why he'd originally lied about dropping her off at her home in Hatfield, instead of admitting he'd taken her to Crickwood. The reason why I didn't bring that up before was because of um, my wife and people getting the wrong idea. He denied having sex with Joy, saying he saw her as a daughter. In one text to him, Joy wrote, I really do appreciate you treating me like a daughter. I've struggled with not having a father in the truth. So in a church where men have all the authority, did any of them go looking for Joy? The court heard that two members went to her flat on the 29th of December. One of them was Shofel Israel himself, probably to avoid suspicion. But no church member contacted the police or her family with any concerns. Outside court, tensions are running high. <laughs> Human beings did not call the police, but you still took a ten pound a month for whatever her type was. You see the money that you pay monthly? You knew she was dead though, you knew she was dead but you're still taking her money. But well, why you she you know about you people knew she's from missing. America, these people. I don't America, care. They don't they're the money, they're no, the money no. takers. It's the money. It's the money takers. No, no. Follow the money. Follow the money. You pay ten pounds or whatever to buy a month, yeah? No, my daughter will still that. pay this, you do. Joy was missing before my mum reported it missing. And they didn't come up to nobody, they didn't, you know, tell anybody, they just kept it to themselves. 
So it's a bit strange to me, in, in my opinion, it's a bit strange. Do you know what, if someone reported Joy missing when the last time that we knew she was in contact with anyone, so the 27th of December, then obviously we would have had some more opportunities for our investigation. But I can't say, you know, how that would have affected things one way or the other because it's not an opportunity that we had. What was your view of the church? Were they helpful? Everyone that we approached spoke to us. Did you find any resistance or lack of cooperation from the church and members of the church? Um, no, I don't think we did. Really? I don't think we did. I think everyone that we approached to, to give a statement gave us a statement. In a church video, US leaders claim members in the UK thought Joy had gone quiet because she'd left RUIC after disappearing from the Telegram messaging group. In January, people were trying to contact her up until the 31st to ask her why. So the consensus of the people was maybe she believes that stuff. So it wasn't taken serious to go to the police until the landlord called and said that her rent is missing, that she's not paying her rent. Now it goes from you leaving IUIC to a missing person. Israel United in Christ says when its members found out Joy was officially missing, they started carrying out searches and handed out flyers in the UK, Netherlands, France and Germany. In a statement, the church said Joy was a beloved member who went from being shy and reserved to a confident and jovial young woman and its members miss her dearly. But one former London member says she was humiliated in front of the congregation after she asked questions about Joy. So I wrote my two questions down and one of the questions was why you never informed the, the next of kin? And the other question was um, why you you didn't get in touch with the family or with police when you realised that she was just missing like this because it wasn't like her and she was with us two nights before. So they were just wishing me to, um, to wear some trousers again to live the truth that if I don't have trust in them, I don't have trust in my Bible and I don't have trust in Christ that um, I am worse than the... <laughs> I mean, they were going on for a very, very long time. BBC Newsbeat. But our top story this evening is about Hertfordshire uni student Joy Morgan. She was last seen on Boxing Day, reported missing in February, and now a man's been found guilty of the 20-year-old's murder. A man has been jailed for at least 17 years for murdering a student midwife from Hertfordshire, whose body has never been found. On the 5th of August, chauffeur El Israel was convicted of the murder of Joy Morgan, sentenced to life with a minimum of 17 years in prison. Justice, justice. Justice has been served. And yes, it's in a very good yes, way. Justice, justice. Life, yeah. life, he's not going to get parole in 17 years. Yeah, that moment lasted like it seemed like it was forever. I actually thought they said, yeah, not guilty. So I had to, and then I heard it, I was like, thank God, thank God. But the relief of a guilty verdict isn't the end. Joy's family still don't know why chauffeur El Israel killed her, and he hasn't told them where her body is. I got once at the low in the hospital. When she would go, I'd like to say goodbye. Something, it was Rico. Yeah, it was Rico. Rico was, Rico was, was um, pushing himself in the middle. So Joy's like, Rico. Yeah, because I was thinking, what happened that day? Why was her face like that? To everyone out there, she's Joy Morgan, but to us, she's just Joy. Someone took her. So it's all hard. I haven't, and I never will put that on my head that I could have done more, because Joy was her own person. She was a 20-year-old woman and she lived far away doing her own thing. She already involved in this church. There's nothing more I could have done. Not having found joy means that this case is not closed and it can't be closed for us fully until we find her. My son, he's been going out looking for my daughter. He's a 24-year-old man. He's looking for his little sister. And I have to be proud of him, you know, because it takes, a, it takes a really strong person to do that. But should he be doing that? Ask that man this. 
See the 24 year old brother be looking on the map to look for his little sister because you decided to take her away from us. What changes would you like to see the church make as a result of what's happened? Look, no matter what changes they do in that church, I don't respect the church. It just needs to be knocked down, taken apart because they are going on that men are the top, women are beneath them and that's it. Maybe maybe some of this could have been avoided if you if they did the right steps. You know? They failed her when her name was deleted from the Telegram group by not fiercely trying to find out if she's okay. You know, we are taught that we are brothers and sisters and we are taught to look after the little ones. And it just seemed like Joy was just failed by the very organisation that she loved and that she trusted and who were responsible to look after her and protect her. Israel United in Christ says when Joy's number left the Telegram group, all indication pointed to her leaving the church or wanting time away, not being in danger. And it says the church strongly cares about the well-being and safety of its members. The judge said Shofel Israel viewing Joy as a daughter was just a pretense, calling him an intelligent man who said nothing but lies and who was keeping a cruel and cowardly silence on where Joy is. IUIC says it repeatedly told its members, including Israel, they shouldn't drop a member of the opposite sex home by themselves without approval. It described Israel's behaviour throughout the trial as disgraceful and not in line with church principles. It says he's no longer a member of the organisation and his lies have caused distress to Joy's family and the congregation. It says its members believe it was an isolated incident. Do you ever think about the possibility that you might never ever find her? No, I've got a saint to live for. People can live like that. People live different ways, yeah? I will live now, my daughter will be found. She will be found. Yeah. She will be found.